Good afternoon, Floss, to you. It is Monday during my lunch hour. This is April 19th, yes. And this is Floss Tube number 66. I am Sharon. My channel name is Magnolia Nana, and I am long overdue in coming back to talk with you. Uh, just life. We all say that, don't we? Life happens. But I've got a table full of goodies to show, and I hope we can visit and enjoy a little bit of lunch hour together. It is sunny and cool in Texas today. We have had a lot of rain and now a cool snap, which we will be enjoying for the heat of summer. And I hope wherever you are, you are staying safe and well, and that you are enjoying being outdoors and also sitting down with your stitching. It has been a huge blessing for me in the last month to have my stitching to come to at the end of a work day. So if you're new, welcome. Please check us out give us a comment or a like or a subscribe. And if you're one of the viewers who has been on board for a long time, I appreciate you and I thank you for coming back. It's a craft that is delightful to share. So a lot has happened in the last month and I don't wanna spend this time talking too much about life events, but I will quickly update you to say that we had a wonderful trip, spending time with two of our daughters and their husbands and three of our grandchildren. As you can imagine, it's hard to leave when you're this far away from them, but it was such a sweet visit to be a part of their day, a part of their community, their homes, and just to receive the hugs and laughter from those grandchildren. The twin baby girls are mobile. They are starting to learn army crawl and cutting teeth and clapping and just delightful. They love being outdoors and Big Brother is amazing. He keeps them entertained. So it was a great, great visit. And I'm sure I'll throw some more uh, talk about the trip in as we go. I also had a birthday and the good thing about getting older is that you're getting older and you don't feel as old as your number shows. So I'm very grateful for that. And that will lead me into my first whip that I'd like to show you, which is a birthday start. This is Rosewood Manor, Music Amongst the Trees. And my dear friend Donna had chosen this for us at a needle workshop up in her area of the woods in the Virginia area, and we were gonna do this as a sow. So we had picked our fabric and gotten our floss organized and got started on my birthday. I was so excited. Well, the problem was that the linen that we chose, which is a 32 count, was not easy for Donna's eyes. She was really struggling to see. So what she has decided to do is to pass her stash on to one of her daughters who loves to cross stitch. And I hope that works out to be fun for her daughter and takes that off of Donna's plate because she's also a quilter and a knitter and always busy. So the sow is no longer a sow, but I am loving this stitch and I'm having trouble putting it down. So let me show you where I am. I hope this will show up. I have it clipped on a piece of board here. Let's see what you can see. Okay, you see that the words and the border around the words is complete. There is a middle tree that is complete. And then if you look at the top where you see those adorable animals, that top section is almost finished. We will have this also over here. And then each section has an animal. And then the rest of the whip will be trees. 
and a few more. Will there be other animals? All the animals will be on that top panel. This is the white linen, 32 count Belfast, and I brought the package. This is the one from Hobby Lobby, and I've had really good experience with this linen. So if you don't wanna put in quite the investment on your fabric, it's, it's a really good alternative. So this is the one that I have not been able to put down since that first week in April. I just wanna stitch it and I really want to have it framed and hanging on my wall. In this lighting, the colors are not coming through. What else is new? But I would love for you to see, maybe you can, that owl and that black bird. Are those not the cutest bird you ever saw? And then the tiny little trees. So each tree will have a different shape and a different design. Just too much fun for one person to have. Then I took with me a lot of my whips. I know that you remember we talked about that. And so I have a little bit of progress on Heartstring Samplery. New every morning. This is one of her older designs. And it's been in my stash forever, and I absolutely love it. I love the verse, and I love the colors. So I want you to see my progress. Let's see, it's in my standing, or seated hoop. Let's see if we can see, okay. So I've gotten a lot of the gold flowers in here, and I believe some of this is progress. I'm not sure what I did on the trip on this, to tell you the truth. I think it was probably this leaf up here and then some of the gold flowers, but this will be slow progress, but it will be one that we would love to have hanging. So moving forward, loving that. This is the one that I mixed in some hand dyed cottons with DMC conversion. It is a favorite. This linen was from my needlework store. And I, of course, I never have the name, but it has been fun to work on. It's a good, good linen. Okay, then I also did a little bit of work on Long Dog Samplers Pandemic. Although this on the trip did not go as quickly as I would like, I was able to finish the border here that had been missing and some of those motifs here to this side so if you know i don't have that in front of me but i want to say that when this section of that motif is finished that will be page three is that correct i believe it is yes and of course, there are many, many, many pages. I did bring the floss that I'm using on this one for you to see in case you wanted to consider this at any point. It is a DMC variegated called Delph Blue, and the number is 121. But that gives you an idea of the variegations in that floss. And I've just loved working with it. It's one strand over one square of 22 count hard anchor. Let me show you that one more time with the fabric behind it. Maybe, does that help it? Well, no, it really doesn't show anything. One thread over one 22 count hard anchor. And it is white. I'm sorry my work computer is making noise in the background. Emails, I guess. Okay, I also pulled out my big toe. This is the salve that I'm doing with one of my daughters. And also another sweet floss tube friend. This was our pandemic well, beginning of COVID start because of the life first 
here. Now mine is not monochromatic, but it is on, it's using two, two colors of blue. It's definitely a blue theme today, isn't there? So the row at the bottom of the blue mo motifs under the words, that's what I've worked on lately. And I think this week I would like to just finish that row. Guys, the sun was out, and as you can tell from the shadow, it has gone behind a cloud. I hope you can see it better there. This is also one thread over one, and this is on 28 count even weave. And those are tiny, tiny little stitches, but it has been such fun to work on. Again, my big toe, peace, Quaker peace. And the flosses on this one, let me show you those Madeiras. You remember I had them left from another project that I had completed a couple of years ago. And I've just loved the way these come out of the container. These are from Germany. Just love this floss, does it have? Number okay, this one is 910 and this one is 912. So that's the floss that I'm using on that one. Now, I have a question connected with this project. Let me remind you of the project. This is my American Sampler by Busilla, and it is, I believe, Esther Cop. Yes, Esther Cop 1765. My question is this, I am using the even weave that came from the kit, but I am, as much as I love these colors of floss, I'm a little unhappy with the color of the fabric. It does not look samplerish to me. <laughs> I just think I made up a word, samplerish. Now, I am not about to not use what I've put into this. There's a lot of time and love in this stitch. But one of our dear floss tubers, Molly West, Sensible Stitcher, had mentioned tea dyeing a piece after she had stitched it and said, if I did not misunderstand, that DMC is color fast. So I'm assuming that would mean the fabric would die, but the stitches would not. Molly, if you're watching this, please comment. If anyone else has experience with coffee or tea dyeing something after it's stitched, what do you think about that for making this look more like a reproduction sample? I mean, obviously I could have picked beautiful linen for this, and I just didn't. I was trying to be economical and use the fabric in the kit. And this is a lovely, lovely even weave. I want to say, is it Swigert? Well, it actually doesn't say, I don't think. But it's a lovely fabric. I just don't, I'm not in love with the, it's so light, I guess, and almost has a yellowish. I don't know if you can tell. That's not showing up true to color. So give me some feedback on that. I want to keep working on this. I'm just not motivated because of that. Sorry about that thread. Where does that go? Oh, there we go. All right. My goal at this point was to finish this row here and then keep working on that bottom border. This was fun on the trip because it was bigger. It is two over two on the 28 count. So talk to me about coffee tea dyeing after the fact. Okay, what do I have here? All right, Dankworth also went with me. This is my long dog sampler that has been in the stash in the whip pile forever and ever but definitely a favorite. Now, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever felt that a, that a project was jinxed. I don't really believe in jinxed, okay? But I feel like this poor long dog sampler has had nothing but issues. 
and it went in timeout originally because I had counted wrong on this whole center motif. Well, when I pulled it out, I was able to fix that without a problem. And you can see that those bands are great. I love the colors, I love the motifs, but let me just tell you what happened up here. Obviously, I worked on the top border on the trip and these motifs here, but when you look at this here, this is something I was working on. I realized when I got home and was working on this one night with my good art light that something is miscounted here, which makes this whole motif in a different position from this one. And I'm not good about fudging, but oh my goodness, people, to rip that out at this point is just making me very sad. Let me show you the original picture again. Okay. What would happen, and I do need comments on this, if I tried to reproduce on this side the mistake I made on this side? Is it going to throw the alignment of the whole thing off? I, I just, I cannot decide what to do, but I'm so sad about it because I was on the go to complete the whole top section. I'm gonna let you look at it more closely. And now that I'm looking at it with you, oh, I don't know what to do. And I know it's, it's my project and it's gonna be hanging in my house. And unless you're a stitcher and you come in and look at it, you're not probably going to notice. <sighs> but I did wanna get that part finished so that I could go down here below and start the, the other motifs. So, I don't know. This is one over one on, hmm. No, it's one over two on 36 count, one over two on 36 count DMC. I couldn't love the design more. I'm just frustrated with myself. All right, that's all the cross stitch. Oh my. Now, I was actually waiting to film, hoping that my birthday haul would come in so that I could show it as haul. But it's coming from Russia, and I'm not sure that I will have it before summer. Let me just tell you what has been ordered. It was my husband's gift for my birthday. I did sort of ask for part of the haul, and then he <laughs> added to the order. The Owl Forest, O-W-L, like a bird, Owl Forest Embroidery has a gorgeous, sweet home kit and I should have brought a picture but hopefully next video I'll show you the whole thing and I had wanted it and wanted it and wanted it and they restocked so he ordered that for me and I believe a couple more graphs and some beautiful hand dyed cotton to go with one of the other graphs my excitement is overflowing. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but I'm just hoping it will get here so that I can share. And that will be new starts coming up. So if I have a mania that is different than a whip mania, the new starts would be the Owl Forest kits. So we'll see what happens. I did create a rotation a couple of weeks ago thinking that if I put most of these projects on a day of the week, I would be able to make better progress. And it worked for two or three days. And then when I got to my birthday start, the music amongst the trees, I couldn't put it down. So the rotation went away. <laughs> I'm terrible. I do still think I want to give it a try. Once I finish that top border on Music Amongst the Trees, I may try to get back to my rotation. I had a project on Monday, a project on Tuesday, 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then on Saturday and Sunday, I had given two days to one project. And it would have been all of the ones I just showed you, I believe, plus the Prairie Life Sampler, Heartstring Sampler. I don't even know if that number works, but I believe that's what I had. I don't think the American Sampler was in the rotation, but the rest of these were. So we'll see what happens. Now, I had a few things that I wanted to talk about that I made notes about, but this is right in front of my nose, so I will show you this first. I have not jumped on the thread drop bandwagon yet, simply because I just haven't. Haven't had time, hadn't had energy, although I love the look of the beautiful floss on the thread drops. So I am still using my little snack Ziploc bags to store my floss with the number and floss inside. Well, there are so many colors in Rosewood Manor projects that I pulled a lot of DMC and I also bought a few to add to it. And I had them in a different box and they kept falling all over the floor. It was a pain. So then I tried to punch a hole in each Ziploc bag to put a ring through like one of these, and I got so frustrated punching holes that I quit. Well, my husband remembered this box that had been a pair of shoes that my daughter had bought. I don't know if you've ever heard of Oka B. They're American made. This box is a keeper. Would you look at this? And it has a magnetic closure. So here we are with all the floss for Music Amongst the Trees. Look how that accordion's out. And then you can pull it back in, and when you close it, it snaps closed. I'm in love with the box. And not only that, but it's the gorgeous Tiffany Blue. I mean, what a great example of recycling. So now this sits right beside me. Maybe that's more repurposing, right? Uh, and I can reach my floss, and I have them in order so that the numbers are easy to find. I could even put scissors and needles in there. I haven't gotten that far. But we organized that, I believe, on Saturday. And oh, I'm so thrilled to have that done. The other thing I wanted to talk about briefly, how are we doing with time, is traveling with your stitching. And I had some sweet viewers say, oh, I don't stitch well in the car. It's not easy. And I was so determined because it was a two-day drive, one way to get to where we were going. Well, I usually try to sit in the back seat if I'm going to be stitching because I feel a little safer than in the front right by the windshield. And I even took my seated frame because it comes apart and I could, so I had that. And it went really well. I used my blue light that clips onto your hoop and could see. I think the frustrating thing about stitching in a vehicle is that you are much slower because of bumps and just the motion of the car. But it was as successful as it could have been. I think the trick that I would encourage would be to take a lot of projects because you either get bored or you get frustrated and sometimes just switching out a project in the middle of the day gives you a renewed focus, I guess, and it makes it easier to get some things done. So I encourage you to try, do whatever it takes. The good thing is it, there were only two of us on the trip, so I spread out all over the back seat, kept my seat belt on, of course, but I had room anyway. Any more tips and I would be thrilled because that's time I don't normally have while he's driving and I'm sitting and you know you want to stitch. And that leads me to needing something to do during work meetings where I don't feel that I can cross stitch because it takes more focus, more brain power, and I'm usually trying to take notes. So I found a big, big skein of this. It's just an acrylic yarn from one of the box stores, but I had bought it for a baby blanket for a little girl. And I started knitting again, little squares. And I can't remember if they're six by six or eight by eight. Oh goodness, well I have it written down. 
So one square, I'm just doing garter stitch, which you can see, and I did not bring the other ones. I have three completed. The other ones, I'm alternating. I'm doing the seed stitch, which is knit, purl, knit, purl, one of each, all the way across, same thing. You just keep that going. I'll try to remember to bring that square next time. So in a meeting, I can be knitting this little square and I can hold it in one hand and take notes. It has helped me be calmer and more focused people. So I am the most beginning knitter on the planet and also the slowest, but I am loving these little squares. I can also take them upstairs when my family wants to watch something if the lighting is bad and I can knit. So you make enough of these for a baby afghan and then you join them together with a slip stitch. And I found um, a video on YouTube that shows you how to do these and then how to put them together. So if I make progress on that, I will link that video. Today, we are just talking about pulling out our knitting for concentration when you can't cross stitch. So that's been fun. And then when someone has a baby girl, I will be ready to go. I have plenty of yarn and it will be soft enough. It's not fine, but it's totally adequate. And I love the variegated pink. Okay, let's see what else I had on my list. Oh, okay, update on Lucy. She is great. While we were on the trip, she stayed here with our youngest daughter, and she even made a visit up to our oldest daughter and her family and made friends with their golden retriever named Ellie. It turned out that Lucy was the alpha dog. Is that not the funniest? So she's had a good month. She is about the same, no weight loss, but no weight gain, still not walking, but playing lots of fetch, and just our little buddy. She's upstairs now with my daughter, but still loving having Lucy here, and she's doing very well. She did get shaved. Well, we took her for her summer grooming, and she came back looking like a puppy. She was so small and no hair, but that hair is growing back in fluffy, so next time I'll try to show her to you. And then, I think just two more items, and I'm going to let you have your day, and I'm going to get back to work. My dear friend Mary of Mary Cat Stitches has already shown this magazine and done a flip through of her favorites, but I want to let you know that it's out. This is the June 2021, and there are some beautiful projects in here. The one that Mary showcased, one of the ones, is on my list. So I am definitely gonna live to be 120, I'm afraid. It is a wildflower pattern. Let me just put my finger on it and I will just quickly show you, hopefully. It's just beautiful. If you have this magazine, you've already seen it, I'm sure. Why didn't I mark it? Oh, this is embarrassing. Wildflower, eight. Okay, but be sure to catch Mary's video because she shows a lot of the beautiful, but look at that. I can just see that pillow on my sofa right now. Huh, have to get on it, won't I? Maybe for the next two or three years of spring. So just cross stitch, a fun one. It definitely gets you in the spirit for summer. And a quick update on the garden. The roses came back healthy and beautiful. And we're already clipping buds to bring into the house. Those heirloom roses have the most amazing fragrance. So hopefully we'll keep them healthy this year. Just thrilled that the winter did not destroy them and that they're doing well. I knew you would want that update. Okay, last thing has nothing to do with stitching. So if you are bored with anything not related to stitching, come back to see me. Thank you for coming today. Enjoy all your stitches. If you don't mind a quick stationary update, I was inspired while at one of my daughters in her home by her beautiful Erin Condren Life Planner. At the time I was there, Erin Condren was having a big, big sale. Everything or a lot of the planners were at least half price. So my daughter Elizabeth helped me order 
Not that I needed another planner. But we ordered this one. Of course, it didn't come for a couple of weeks. But I have to tell you, friends, this has been my arts and crafts when I'm not stitching. And I have had as much fun as a child with a new box of paints or what else do children love? A new bicycle. So, you know, I don't, I'm not saying I want you to see personal information, but I will have to just show you how pretty this, I'll show you this page here. Oh, come on. Okay, so each month has a little dashboard of you can put certain important things to you. And I figured out what I wanted on each section. I have uh, special plans here. These were my birthday plans. Uh, kind of a to-do list for a, an occasion or a trip. Then a focus scripture here. And here was my cross-stitch plan for the month of April. So I am just having so much fun with this. I've also made lists in the back and tried to decorate those. So, you know, child's new toy, fun, fun. I do recommend her quality, amazing quality, and, you know, half price, I couldn't, because I just couldn't pass it up. So, let me close. Please comment, let me know what's up with you, what you're working on, and give me feedback on coffee, tea, dyeing, a finished piece, as well as your suggestions about my dank worth and the, the motif that's miscounted. Thanks for coming. Let's get together again soon. Do take care and enjoy all your projects. See you soon.